This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd remind you that this afternoon at 3 o'clock we have the installation of Reverend Michael Burdick. Uh, he and his family are here today and I ask them to join us at the door this morning following the service and uh, hope that all of you will be able to come back for the special s installation service. And the board, youth board is looking for donations of one gallon jars. They may be dropped off in the church office. And there's a reminder to sign up for the adult fellowship trip. Uh, they'll be going to Yoder's Kitchen on uh, October the 19th. And uh, you're asked to sign up for that. And then the hayride will be next Sunday evening at on October 13th and if you want to participate in that event uh, please sign up uh, it's all again and you can do that on the bulletin board and today is LWML Sunday and we'll be celebrating the LWML outreach uh, for of uh, Jesus and our Lord and Savior and then last evening I just want to share with you uh, how God provides uh, last evening, as the church service was getting ready to start, uh, Jerry Starner was the organist, and I greeted her, and about two minutes later, somebody comes to me and says, we got to call an ambulance. Jerry has fallen, and uh, she hit her head, and she cut her finger. She's okay, but the ambulance came and picked her up, and, uh, and she had three stitches in her finger. But you know, the amazing thing was we didn't have an organist. And all this music, none of us had any idea what the tune would be. At least I didn't. I didn't figure anybody else would know. And the last person to walk into church was a visitor from St. Peter, St. Peter, Illinois. And I said to her, I said, do you play the organ? 
And she kind of hesitated, and she agreed. Carolyn went, he was there, and she knew how to turn it all on and take care of it. And she has been an organist for a long time. And I, the miracle was God knew we was going to have a problem, and he sent someone to take care of it before we even knew we had need. And why I ask her that, I don't know. God just put it in my mind. And we, and everything just went wonderful last night. It just shows we need to trust the Lord and he will provide. Let's begin the worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Confident in his steadfast love, we approach our Heavenly Father, seeking his forgiveness. Merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and action. I have done that which you forbid, and I have failed to do that which you command. I have grown timid and afraid when confronted by evil. I have not trusted you completely when facing challenges bigger than myself. For the sake of the atoning work of your Son, Jesus Christ, my Savior, forgive me. By your Holy Spirit, lead me to a faith more confident in your wisdom, grace, and power. Lord, put my faith to work for the sake of your kingdom. Um, Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, let us join together I'm in reading the words of uh, the Kyrie. Have mercy on us, Lord. Receive our prayers and praise. Defend us by your mighty word. Lord, comfort, help, and save. Grace all who worship here with unity and peace. 
In all the world, both far and near, your kingdom, Lord, increase. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty and forgiving God, we thank you for this LW Mail Sunday. Fill us with your spirit. And through your word, lead us to boldly share the life-giving message of the cross, which has power to cha change our life and the lives of others who live in darkness of sin. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, following the first reading, we will have the psalm reading, uh, and then uh, the bell choir will play, and then we'll continue with the epistle. The first reading is found in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not hear? Or cry to you, violence, or you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at me wrong? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed, and the justice never goes forth, for the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may re run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the responsive reading of the Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you, all of you, attack a man to batter him, like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, and inwardly they curse. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rest my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you will render to a man according to his work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
second reading is found in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, starting, starting with verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, as I remember your tears. I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this purpose I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying out of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel, for which I am appointed a preacher, an apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed for what I know I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you may have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard and good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And he, Jesus, said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this small berry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So also you, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join in reading the cr uh, cradle prayer. Creating Father, by your word, all things have come to be. From empty, void, and formless dark to all that we can see. At eventide and morning sun, your tapestry you weave, and now in unity we sing, O Father, we believe. Redeeming Son, here virgin born, from heaven to earth you came, to save us all from sin and death, so Jesus is your name. For us you suffered and you died, you rose that we might live, and now in unity we sing, O Jesus, we believe. Empowering Spirit, breath of life, you gather us as one. Like rain and snow, your word comes down, its purposes are done. Your wind blows free, your fruit is grown, your many gifts receive. And now in unity we sing, O Spirit, we believe. Cry. 
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ. His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i stand grace mercy and peace be unto you from our risen lord and savior jesus christ and may his spirit open up our hearts and our minds to his word amen our uh, I want to give credit to Dr. Reverend Dr. Dean Nadstadi. Uh, he is former president of the LCMS uh, Minnesota South District, uh, who wrote many of the thoughts for the message this day. Uh, our text is a part of the gospel reading, and the Lord said, If you had faith like a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. This is the word of the Lord. We live at a time when people are saying that the world has changed and it's hard to be a Christian. And there are some who have left the church thinking that the church is no longer relevant, that it's judgmental, and that it is hypocritical. And as the world becomes more secularized, Sometimes Christians find it harder to share the message of the cross. And we think that this world is becoming far more evil than it ever was, but the fact is, the world is the same as it was in Noah's time, and in Jesus' time, and St. Paul's time, 
Most of the people in the world are unbelievers. They do not accept or believe Jesus as in him as their Lord and Savior. They live in the darkness of sin. Oh, the technology we experience in the modern conveniences, those have all changed. I mean, how wonderful it is that we live at a time like this. But the fact is, is most people still don't know Jesus as their Savior. We lived in a, live in a world made up of unbelievers. And the world that we live in needs to hear the message of the cross, of what Jesus Christ has done for them, and of the love that he has for them, and the new life that he wants to give to them. They need to hear the word, that life-changing word that can change the hearts and the lives of people, just as it did during the time of St. Paul. You know, as he went out, and actually, when you look at what happened in Jerusalem, the uh, apostles, they just stayed in Jerusalem, then persecutions came, and the lay people went everywhere, and they shared the message of the cross, and the church grew. And then uh, Paul, who was an unbeliever, uh, became a believer, and he began to share the message of the cross. And when he went to uh, the city of Thessalonica, this is what the unbelieving world there had to say. It says, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. In other words, the message of the cross was changing uh, the lives and, of people. And that means for us today in this world in which we live, it's very important for people to hear the word and to hear the songs that uh, give honor and glory to God and to Jesus Christ. For through that word, lives change. Jesus during his lifetime was constantly teaching the disciples. And right before the words of our text, as you probably remember from the gospel reading, Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Jesus is simply teaching his disciples that this is the way it is to be as God's people. Jesus was a very forgiving person. People hated him, some despised him, but yet he reached out to them. He forgave them. He actually has forgiven all people. Some people just don't want it. When he died upon the cross, he paid the debt of everybody's sins. They've all been taken care of. And those who hear the message of the cross, some do not want to ch the message that they receive. They continue to live in their sin, but Jesus has brought forgiveness to all people. And when we have bitterness and hatred in our heart, uh, it's hard to get rid of. It's like those roots of a mulberry tree that go way down. And we can't remove it ourselves. And uh, Jesus uh, said that if you had the faith of a mulberry tree, uh, I mean, a faith of a grain of mustard seed, you can do great things. And the disciples said, increase our faith. And to that, Jesus didn't say, Shazam, your faith is strengthened. Now you're stronger in the faith and now go. He said to them, if you had the faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Now, does this mean that you and I who have faith can say to a mulberry tree, be planted in the sea and it will be uprooted and it will go there? I doubt it. I doubt it. So what is Jesus saying with these words? He is saying it's not helpful to measure our faith about how strong we are or how weak we are. Don't we sometimes say, oh, if I just had a stronger faith. Oh, if I just believed more. And what we're doing is putting it all upon ourselves that we can make ourselves have stronger faith and stronger, uh, be a stronger believer. But that's not possible. Faith is not measured of how we understand. If faith is not to be measured, then how are we to understand these words of Jesus? What he says, faith like 
a grain of mustard seed. He is gently, just simply saying in these words, trust me, trust me. Trust me, because Jesus can remove mulberry trees. Jesus can do anything. When we trust him and we live in him, our lives become different. It's only in Jesus that we can remove the mulberry trees, you might say, of deep bitterness and hatred out of our hearts. Jesus makes that possible when he lives in us. In the Latin, there are two words for faith, fide, which has to do with uh, when we believe something very strongly, like in the creed we say, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in the Holy Spirit, and we truly believe that, but there's the other faith, it's called fiducia, and it's a faith that has to be a relational faith, a close walk with Jesus a trusting in him uh, as our Lord and Savior. And I like to think of that kind of a faith as like that which Elijah had when uh, he was uh, challenging the prophet of Baal. Elijah had absolutely no pro uh, power to make that sacrifice to be consumed. And I always wonder, you know, many times when I read that as how did Elijah know for sure that God was going to do that? But he knew because he had a relationship with God. He loved God with his heart. And he knew that God would come through. He did as God wanted him to do. And we need to have that kind of relationship faith with Jesus. St. Paul expressed the same kind of a thing when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, and that all things means anything that's necessary carrying out God's will. You know, there's times in life we say, I can't do that. I said that at one time in my life. I can never get up in front of anybody and speak. I, when I was thinking about the ministry and I was at Winfield, Kansas, and I was told I was going to have to do the chapel after the first uh, semester, the next semester I quit school. Because I couldn't get up in front of anybody and speak to a whole crowd of people. And then when I was in the Navy, I went to speech classes three times. And each time I thought, oh, I can never do this. I can never do this. And this Bible passage came to me and it says, I can do all things through Christ. It's when I realized I can't do it. I really can't. It's Jesus who lives in me that enables me to do it. I am who I am, as Paul would even say, because of Jesus. And you are who you are when you have faith in Jesus because of Jesus. And you can do things that you didn't think was possible. Well, you couldn't do it, but guess who can do it? Who can make it happen? Who can give you a love for other people that maybe has created great problems for you? You may have hated them and despised them, but who can change that? It's Jesus. He can fill you with a love for that person. I think you remember, uh, I don't know if you remember Richard Wurban, who was uh, persecuted for Christ for 17 years in Romania prison camp and he said I learned to love my persecutors and he's the one who started the Voice of Martyrs magazine which is a ministry to people who are being persecuted for their faith he did what he did because of Jesus Jesus made it possible he didn't have that power within himself and faith like a mustard seed is saying that we can forgive no matter what's been done to us, no matter how unfair it has been, no matter how hurtful. Jesus can enable us to forgive as we have been forgiven in Christ. And you know, Jesus has done some wonderful things for us. Just imagine what he's done for you. He has changed your life from death into life. 
He's given you a new life. You and I belong to the kingdom of Satan in the beginning, but now he's placed us in his family. We are children of God. And he made that possible through baptism where he claimed us as his own. We were cleansed of our sin and we were given a new life. And he is the one who can empower us to live for him in our daily life, in our relationships with others. He is the one who makes the impossible possible. You and I, as God's people, can learn to forgive our neighbors if they've hurt us. We as God's people can live for Jesus, reaching out to others with his love, such as uh, to the Haiti mission as we pray for it and give to it, uh, such as uh, being kind to a neighbor who hasn't been kind to us, by helping people who have needs, uh, by giving to the LWML Mike Box, uh, those small coins have done marvelous things in God's kingdom. The LWML's uh, theme, I would always say, was the mustard seed faith. They took those little offerings and by putting them all together, millions of people have been helped. They've helped to build churches in foreign nations, to support seminaries in America and throughout the world, in uh, helping to send witnesses uh, of, about Jesus to other places. You know, the list could go on and on. And they have done many things right here in our areas to help with missions and other places. And we can only say thank you, God, for this organization which has been able to uh, do things that would bring honor and glory to you. Things that we might thought have been impossible, but because you are working through them, you are making many things possible, and the world is changing. And we should not find it hard to believe again what Jesus can do, for he has made each of us his children. And to that we can say, to God be the glory. Great things he has done, so loved he the world. He gave us his son. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now receive our tithes and offerings to the Lord.
Friends in Christ, lift up your hearts to God and pray with me. Almighty God, give to your church a boldness of faith, which is not afraid to go where you lead us. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for the mission and ministry of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, supporting your work across the world. By your spirit, strengthen and encourage all Christian women as they fulfill their various callings in service to you. Sustain our generosity as we support mission outreach through the LWML mic boxes. Lord, by your power, multiply your gifts for your kingdom's increase. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing, Lord, to those who are sick. We ask that you would be with Carol Hull Scudder, who had surgery and a kidney stint put in and is doing well, and be with Jerry Starner and grant healing to her, and be with those who have cancer, Nick Miller, Craig Wolf, uh, Lori Mayberry, and we ask that uh, you would uh, touch their lives and grant them healing, and be with the family of Dave Sauer, Sauer and Nick Altoff, a friend of Marlon and Rochelle Allward, and be with Howard Haig in his recovery and Becky Reagan in hers. Be with Zach Fritcher, who had surgery at the Children's Hospital in St. Louis. And also be with Marion Tolch, who, has a can who is a cancer patient. And be with Mildred Rankin, who is a hospice patient. We ask that you would uh, give each of these persons and uh, your uh, presence and touch them uh, as our healer, we ask that you would also look upon our friends and neighbors and others we know who are in need of your healing touch and that uh, they would become aware of your love for them and we pray that you would grant them healing in accord with your plan. And we ask also, Lord, that you would continue to look over all others who are facing uh, difficult and hard times in their life. Bring comfort and hope also to those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. With grateful hearts, we celebrate your grace in the lives of the newly baptized, those just married. We ask that you would be with Jake Duvall and Emily Washburn, who were united in marriage yesterday. And May they live out their marriage to your honor and glory with Jesus at the center of their lives. And we ask that you'd be with those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. And may they be truly blessed through these celebrations. Lord, in your mercy. For all who lead in the world and in our nation and those who lead in your church, bless them to lead with humility, wisdom, justice, and peace. Protect all who serve us in harm's way. We ask that you would be with all of the police officers who are faced with constant danger and others. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless this afternoon as Pastor Burdick is being installed as shepherd of this congregation. We ask that uh, you would touch uh, the hearts of all the people to rejoice and to come and to join with us in this uh, celebration and installation service. We ask your blessings upon his family, and we're thankful that they have been able to move to our area safely, and ask that you would be with them as they continue to settle in their new home. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
And Lord of life, use us, your people, to provide for the poor and the hungry across the world. Through your church, preserve and defend the unborn and all victims of hate and injustice. Renew our faith as we serve boldly in your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And whatever else we have upon our hearts and minds, we ask that you would bring to us, that we bless us as we bring it to you in the prayer that you have taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join together in the LWML Pledge. In firm of gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. And in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he hath need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voices to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. O oh God the Father, we give you thanks that through your word you strengthen us for service in your kingdom. Your love motivates us to live out our faith in Jesus Christ, your Son, in all of our callings and relationships. By your Holy Spirit, give us grace to go out with boldness, to witness to what we have seen and heard through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen.
again, uh, Pastor Burdick and his family are here, so I would ask them to go ahead and start back toward the back. And, and uh, while he's doing that, please wait till they get back there and let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. 